We've mentioned the p equals np question uh, a number of times now as, as the most important question in theoretical computer science. And we've said that one way to formulate it is exactly to ask whether there's an efficient, that is polynomial time procedure to test whether or not a formula in propositional logic is satisfiable. Now, why is that such an important problem? I mean, you know, uh, we're not just logicians and we want to know whether or not some formula is satisfiable. How did it take on this uh, enormous importance and apply to so many fields? And illustrating how you could use a satisfiability tester to factor efficiently is a good hint about why it is that all sorts of things reduce to SAT and why it, in fact, is such a centrally important problem. So let's suppose that we have a satisfiability tester and use it to find the, how to factor a number n. Now, the observation begins with how you use a SAT solver is that you can begin by writing a or observing that it's easy enough to design a digital circuit that multiplies, uh, that does arithmetic multiplications. In other words, it's got some number of uh, bits reserved for an input x, say k bits, and another k bits for an input y, and it's got 2k output lines that produce uh, the uh, digits of x times y. You might need one extra digit, but never mind that. Okay, so this is a multiplier circuit. It takes an x, a k bit x in, and a y, k bit y in, and it spits out uh, the product, uh, uh, which is another 2k bit number. And this is not a terribly big circuit. The naive way to design it would use a number of gates that was about, and a number of wires that was about quadratic in the number k. The, uh, it's easy enough to design one of these things where the size is literally bounded by 5 times k squared, uh, maybe plus a constant. And uh, so this definitely a small polynomial. We can, uh, given uh, the number of bits that I'm working with, it's easy enough to build this multiplier circuit. Okay, now suppose that I have a way to test satisfiability of circuits. Um, how am I gonna use this multiplier circuit to factor? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is let's suppose the, the number uh, that I'm factoring is, called, is n, and it's the product of two primes p and q. Those are the kinds of n's that we'd be using in RSA. And let me also observe that it's very easy to design an n tester. That is uh, a little digital circuit that has uh, 2k uh, input lines and produces a one on its one output line precisely when the input is the binary representation of n. So let's attach this equality tester that does nothing but ask whether it's being fed the digits of n as input, and it produces an output, yes, for one for n, and zero if the input pattern is n, the digital representation, the binary representation of anything other than n. That's another trivial circuit to build. So we put those two together, and now watch what happens. Um, I'm gonna take the circuit and set the first of the input bits to zero. And then I'm gonna ask the SAT solver the following question. Is there a way to set the remaining input bits um, other than zero? So I've set the first one to zero. What about these other bits? I, the SAT solver can tell me whether or not it's possible to get a one out of this circuit with the zero there fixed. So let's uh, ask the SAT solver what happens. And the SAT solver says, hey, yes, there is a way to fill in the remaining digits and get an output one. Well, what does that tell me? Well, it tells me that uh, there, uh, there is a factor that starts with zero. So let's fix the zero based on the fact that um, it's possible for me to fill in the remaining digits with uh, the bits of uh, factors x and y that equal n, okay? Uh, let's try to set the second uh, uh, input bit to zero and see what happens. Well, we'll ask the SAT tester, is it possible now to fill in the remaining digits to get the uh, two numbers x and y that multiply and produce n and therefore output one? And the SAT, uh, the SAT tester says, no, this is un an unsatisfiable circuit. You can't get a one out of it anymore. That tells me that I have to set the second bit to one in order to have uh, a factor that uh, of n where the x and y will multiply together to be n. All right, fine, go to the third bit, ask whether or not zero works. Uh, the SAT tester says, let's say yes, so then I can fix zero. I now know the first 
uh, three bits of x. And of course, I go on, and in 2K SAT tests, I know exactly what p and q are. And I have, in fact, found the factors p and q. So that wraps that one up. That's how you use a SAT tester. You just do the SAT test 2K times, and you factored this 2K bit number. Um, and of course, if the SAT test is polynomial in K, then doing it 2K times just is also polynomial in K with one degree high, higher. OK, now the, the satisfiability problem as we formulated was a, a problem about formulas. That is, you wrote out a propositional formula and asked whether or not it was satisfiable. And I'm instead asking about satisfiability of binary circuits. But in fact, as we did in some early exercises, you can describe a, a binary circuit by assigning a fresh variable to every wire in the circuit and then writing a little formula around each gate, which explains how the input wires to that gate are related to the output wire of that gate. And that little formula explains that wiring of that gate. And you take the end of all those formulas, and you have a formula that is describing uh, the structure of the uh, of the circuitry, and in fact, the formula is satisfiable if and only if the circuit can produce an output one. So we really have, by assuming that I could test satisfiability of formulas, I can uh, therefore test satisfiability of circuits, and therefore I can factor. So this, this that's a simple trick to find a, uh, a propositional formula that's equally satisfiable to the circuit. If the circuit produces output one, uh, if and only if this formula of about the same size as the circuit is satisfiable. Uh, and that's the last piece that I needed in order to completely reduce satisfiability, the uh, factoring rather, to the satisfiability problem. And you can see that this is actually a general method that will enable you to reduce most any kind of one-way function uh, to a few SAT tests.